very warm welcome to everyone to this uh, round table which is part of the evening of stories uh, on behalf of Alios Prose to Bengal and Culture Months. It is a pleasure to welcome all old friends, new friends, everybody to this session. And uh, I would uh, now request uh, Janardhanda, uh, Janardhan Ghosh to start the session. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a very enriching session. The session is being recorded and we will share with you the recording of the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shudipto, for creating this platform. And uh, I also thank Alliance Francaise du Bengal and Culture Monks for bringing us together, and uh, which is very much required during this time, I feel, as human beings, this common space where we can come together and share our feelings, share our thoughts. That is what we all long for. And thank you for creating such kind of a wonderful platform and helping us uh, to share our own thoughts and also know what others feel and create a common consensus of a beautiful life and uh, a happy life. That is what we all aim. Finally, that is what we are looking for. So today in the round table, as um, uh, we call it, though we are all visible in a kind of a linear uh, photographs one after the other, <laughs> it's not a physically round table, which we couldn't uh, create, but mentally we are trying to create a very uh, synchronized uh, table where we are almost, we are all connected. We are almost touching each other, holding each other's hands and creating a kind of a spherical table. That is what I feel, that that is the desire that we all have. And uh, the topic that uh, has been selected for today's round table is emergence. Now, uh, uh, all of us here are uh, kind of in a practice which we uh, fancifully, or we would love to call as storytelling. And we have got different names as some of us call it Kothakuli, some of us use puppets, some of us use some kind of uh, other expressions to uh, embellish and, uh, you know, create more uh, illumination to our practice or give more light to our practice. That is what we do. But fundamentally, we all know that we love to tell stories. Now, um, uh, there is a very basic question is whether stories emerged because of a very, very fanciful or a kind of a random uh, desire of human beings or was there a very basic necessity for stories to emerge? Is it like food? Is it like shelter? Is it like uh, all the other kind of needs that we are surrounded with or we have been harping on? Are stories a similar kind of an emergence? Are so stories a similar kind of a need that grew from time immemorial and then it evolved through time? And to date, we still feel the need of stories. So from our perspectives, we are going to discuss. And with the challenges that we are facing now, with the kind of uh, this modern times, or rather, if we call it more uh, interesting, postmodern times, this uh, uh, situation that is around us, the innumerable challenges that we are facing, how is storytelling emerging? How is storytelling evolving? How is it helping us? Is it kind of being used as a prop for us to survive? Is it an essential prop or is it an essential part? So we are going to kind of, you know, uh, discuss and um, uh, we will try to kind of share our thoughts. Uh, we will see that how this togetherness and this process of uh, inter, uh, 
uh, personal exchanges that takes place with stories, how collectively we come along with this uh, process of storytelling, how individually we, uh, uh, we cherish stories, all these aspects we would like to uh, discuss from different points of view today. So without much ado, I would try to connect and I would also like to kind of, you know, uh, call you up because I don't know because the arrangements of the names might be different in each other's uh, uh, system, like in, in each other's, uh, on each other's screen. So it might be difficult that who is after whom. So I would just call up names and uh, we will start with uh, Maya. Maya, uh, she is a, one, uh, a wonderful storyteller and she has... Just, uh, uh, just yeah. sorry to interject. Varun, yes, uh, Varun uh, we, we are trying... Sorry. Varun, we are trying to promote you as a panelist. Please accept the request as you would then be able to join the discussion. Uh, please, uh, uh, Sarah, can you... Uh, to promote Varun as a panelist, please. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I try, but I'm sorry, it doesn't work. So I can let you that. Mm -hmm. That's all. I'm very sorry, I don't understand why I cannot promote him panelist. Can you? So I, I think Varun is there, but uh, he's he is already there, isn't it? I, yeah, can... I can see him as a panelist yes. on my yes. screen. Uh, he's the same here. I can see him as the panelist. And I also welcome Banani and Rashmi, Rashmi Roy and Banani Khatuk in this session. Okay, Sudipto, can we go ahead? Hi, Sudipto. Yeah. I think. Ah, I done. think yes, Sarah. Yes. It's, okay. It's done, yes. Thank you. So uh, we will start with Maya. Maya, please uh, begin the conversation. You can also later on. Uh, it doesn't mean that once you speak, you cannot. You can again kind of interject, intervene, uh, incorporate, and share. And uh, sometimes you can add on things which others are also uh, sharing. So we will start with uh, Maya. Maya, please. Um, well, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, my name is Maya, and um, I'm currently living in um, Essex in the United Kingdom, where I am studying world performance, um, which is a performance degree um, at an acting school. And I'm in my third year. And so I think um, for me, what stories are about and what stories are like the purpose of stories is really um, hearing um, other people's perspectives um, in, um, in their lives. And I think it's to also understand people better and help us make connections um, between communities, whether that is um, communities um, in a similar country or communities that are between countries. Um, and I think um, for me, there's something about um, as you were uh, mentioning the emergence of stories, I think we have to go maybe back to the first, you know, stories that were told. Um, and I'm thinking particularly of indigenous um, wisdom and how indigenous uh, wisdom is um, usually told through story, um, maybe around a, a circle, around a fire. And um, I think, um, whether those communities be in um, the Americas or the um, Australia or uh, within India. I mean, there are still um, big indigenous communities that we can see in, in the North, in the Northern Nordic countries where there are still a lot of um, uh, indigenous populations that are also trying to push for certain um, issues. So, you know, indigenous wisdom that reconnects with the earth and also manages to talk about climate change. Um, I think those can all be done through stories, refugee stories as well. Um, and like, how do you integrate, in, integrate the personal um, story with the historical and the cultural story? Um, because we also share stories where we um, show our, you know, our own stories and that can make other people um, that feel validated through those stories um, just by telling our own personal stories. 
Thank you, Maya. Thank you for uh, for for mentioning about this narratable self, like where you actually the self of yours becomes a subject which you want to uh, share. Like you tell the story about yourself and then you validate yourself through stories, like you define yourself through stories. And at the same time, the individual you is also getting connected with the collective you through cultural stories, climates, and extending yourself into different directions and different aspects of life, survival, existence. So that is good as a beginning, Maya. Thank you so much. And, uh, and now um, I would request uh, uh, Gauri to uh, add and also add her thoughts to this round table. Gauri. Gauri Raji is also Hi. a very popular storyteller and uh, she is a wonderful weaver of stories. And so we hear from her. Yes, Gauri. Thank you so much, Janardhan. Um, it was wonderful being in conversation with you at your workshop, uh, was it last year? Uh, and I think it was really interesting to see what connections there were. Um, and that brings me to what Maya kind of uh, began with. I Broadly, I don't have much to add to what Maya said in that, you know, she's talked about all the, um, what I would call the, the kind of touchstones of storytelling, connections, indigenous wisdom, reconnection with the earth, um, all these are fundaments and how the personal narrative kind of meets the collective and the cultural narratives. Um, I think probably what I can do constructively in addressing this theme of emergence, maybe through some of the work that I have been doing um, in storytelling, both as a migrant myself and a lot of work that I do with, initially with refugees and asylum seekers. And now I kind of say I work with migrant experiences. Um, and, and kind of to bring what Maya said to uh, some kind of specific example, I'll probably just begin by um, reading a, a, a narrative of where my connection with storytelling began. And um, what I see is the place of stories and storytelling um, in moving lands. So um, in a sense, we're kind of grappling with indigenous wisdoms at a different level because <laughs> we have left our land in a way, but the, I came to Britain as, a, uh, as an adult. So in a sense, you know, that, that experience is quite a specific experience than if you come as a child. There is a lot of the land uh, and cultural narratives that's already seeped into your bones. And then you're coming to a new landscape and kind of trying to rework that and see how that meets the new land where you arrive. So I'm just gonna read a bit to you, which may be a kind of um, opening to where I come to storytelling and my work in storytelling. Um, it starts with a personal narrative. I moved to England as a 26 year old adult, a privileged student with a scholarship. It took me another 15 years to realize that England meant nothing to me. I loved being in England. I admired the instinctive belief in the commons an unspoken contract of public life that people carry in their manners and being. A sense of humility masked as self-deprecation a willingness to laugh at oneself, the shock that people experience in the face of unfairness that is so alive still, the everyday gestures of kindness. I could go on and on. But in that messy way of love, I also responded with intense dislike to so many things. The ubiquitous masks of politeness, the shaming of individuals in public life, the unspoken anger and fear of those not like themselves, the hysteria around children. 
So I was alive somewhat, but England still meant nothing to me. I was so involved in contributing to the place I had arrived in and in making a life that I forgot about myself and my life. England, the land of the English, meant nothing to me for the 15 years that I lived here. I was so clothed in layers of coverings acquired in England to protect myself. The land had no chance to enter or affect me. And with that, memories kept their distance. It hit me first when, I, when as a lecturer, I entered a classroom. Students were fascinated by what I had to say, but they understood nothing. Fewer and fewer students entered the classroom. I began to dread speaking in public and began to acquire a stutter. Then one day, curiously, I went along to a storytelling workshop. You see, my thesis was on narratives amongst displaced people in India. So I thought there is a link there. Throughout that week at the workshop, there was very little about intellectually cogitating. There was thinking, but there was movement and walking in silence. And there was nothing about telling a life story. A short 10 minute story surfaced from the shadow spaces of my bones, one that had long been pushed away, about a squirrel. As I told the story to a small group of people, I gazed in wonder as she, the squirrel, arrived, and I felt her sitting on my shoulder as she had done in the past. And for the first time, I was beginning to see a bridge to home in England. The more I listened to stories, the more I told stories, the more I arrived home. I saw the boundaries of my body arrive into being, meet and touch the bodies of others. Their telling of their stories revealed their homes. And I began to relearn the art of being a guest and of hosting guests. We are all at home with stories told from deep within our vulnerable beings. And we are all guests in other people's stories. Regional, racial, sexual, national, and physical borders have nothing to do with home. So as you can see for me, and I believe the more I work with migrant experiences, the more storytelling becomes about making home. And I think that's where I'm going to park this for the moment and then come back uh, yeah. during the discussion. So, thank yeah. you, thank you, Gauri. Uh, I also remember a very young boy and he's a school boy. And uh, uh, I was conducting a workshop with uh, young boys on storytelling. And uh, this boy volunteered and he said that um, I love stories. I, I, I enjoy listening to stories, but the, the, the most important thing that I really cherish is when I participate in that story, I become a part of that. I, I always wish to be a part of that story. So either, as you had already mentioned, that we are guests in other stories. We are there as guests. And sometimes we also play a very active role. And somewhere down the line, Gauri, you're right, that we, the story shelters us. The kind of, uh, uh, the kind of support it provides us in our daily life, and not only uh, uh, where we are fighting with different issues, but even our regular, uh, usual existence. I think story uh, supports us a lot. And that support is something that uh, we all need and which the stories are providing. That was a wonderful experience from the personal perspective, how story becomes your home where you, uh, your ideas, your conflicts, your difficulties, your joys are all being stored and not only stored, also exhibited, cherished, celebrated. And Gauri was so eloquent in uh, uh, kind of sharing that in our lovely uh, piece of 
uh, rendition that she had just now. Thank you, Gauri. And so with that, we would like uh, Francis to add something to this round table, something from Thank his you. point of view. Francis. Thank you. Thank you, Janardanda. Thank you. I've, uh, uh, so far, I've uh, really enjoyed uh, both uh, Maya's and uh, Gori's uh, contributions. And um, uh, uh, although I've enjoyed them very much, uh, I feel that the focus of our conversation so far is very much on ourselves as the creators of the story. We've been mentioning the narrative self. Yeah? That is what uh, Eugene Adanda took out of Ma Ma Maya's uh, introduction. And, and, and where Gori says that the story represents her, her journey home, to her home. Yeah? I, I sincerely feel that. I, I really feel that as, as a traveler of this globe who, who, who feels home nowhere myself, I, 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 can, I can really understand what, is, what, what Gori means by, 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 by all this. But for me, we, we lack something because, because for me, a story is, is, is what connects us. It is not just an expression of the self. The, the story is the big connector. So, so uh, I, I, see, I see story as, as, as having a function somewhere in the realm between semantics, um, between the meaning of semantics and the understanding. You, you, you see, we, 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 we have ourselves and we have our journeys and we have our homes and we have our in, in, individual uh, spaces and our individual worlds. And, and, and in there we express ourselves, but, but what is the meaning? We are continuously looking for meaning, are we not? Yeah. And then when we express something like a poem, yeah, if, if, I, if I would recite a poem to you, I would know what the meaning is that I have put in the poem. But what you take from this poem remains completely oblivious to me. Yeah. So, so it is very necessary for us when we create stories to embed into these stories what I like to call affordances. It's a, it's a word that I've taken from the world of design. You know, we, we need to embed affordances for people to, to, create, to, to find meanings, their, their meanings in the, in the story that we create. It's not, when I tell you the story, it's no longer about my meaning. It's about the meaning that you take away. And in other words, it's about your understanding. And that I think is the vital power of stories. And, and looking back at what has happened to, uh, to all, all of us, this enormous uh, apocalyptic drama that has happened in the last 18 months uh, uh, in, in this world, um, we can see that uh, wherever there has been strife and discontent, and discussion and 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 divisive divisiveness. It is because the uh, uh, we no longer think in terms of the fact that when we mean something, it needs to be understood, and we need to take into account that understanding just as much as the meaning that we embed in our words. Yeah? And that's where I see the crucial role of, of stories. That's good. That's good, Francis. That's the, that's the other perspective. And with what you said, I would just uh, like to refer to one of these um, uh, great Nobel laureates from India, uh, Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, he's uh, a very famous uh, poet and um, uh, playwright. Um, he has written, uh, he has been writing lyrics and have given, given music to a lot of his lyrics, uh, a great uh, thinker, a philosopher. Now he said what um, uh, Francis had shared just now that when the moment I write the poem, the poem belongs to me. The once it is completed and I deliver it to the readers and then 
it is no more my property. The property is belongs to the readers. So then the poet doesn't belong to me. It is your poem. So this is something what uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Francis also is intending to share uh, uh, in this round table is the, the storyteller and the other big, big world. The storyteller and the extended, I would rather say the other extended self which exists around the storyteller. How are they connected? How are they relating? to the creation that you create as a storyteller, how do they relate? How do they understand? How do they kind of find meaning in it? And through that process, they also become collective. So that individual storyteller connects the world with his story. So stories almost act like a glue. It, it acts like a connector. It acts like a bridge. It acts like many other things which help people to come together where individual, uh, I think an individual hunter or an individual food gatherer would have become a community slowly in the old. That is what the, the, the basic idea that I think uh, storytelling must, must have helped. And thank you for, yes, yes, Francis. If you, and, if you permit me to add something, Janardan. Yes, yes, yes. Because what, what Gori said, what I, I found was was very meaningful. Mm. Uh, in her text, she, she kept repeating this, this drone, this, this mantra-like drone of it means nothing to me. Mm. Yeah. And, but maybe that's, that, that's exactly where it hurts, you know. It means nothing because right. we lack the stories. Right. Yeah. So you, you, you Gori, you, you, you find yourself uh, having moved at an adult age to uh, to England, and it means nothing to you because you lack the stories. Okay. It's it's uh, it's it's just like like when I first set foot in on on Indian soil in 1978. Now 45 years ago, almost, I set foot on Indian soil. It also meant nothing to me. Nothing. Because I lacked the stories, the stories. and once I got, I could gather the stories and I could grasp the stories, then it, it then it got meaning, mm. and my relationship with India was a quiet meaning. Good, that's great. That's that's the uh, that's wonderful. So now I would request Arkamitra to uh, uh, kind of add. Uh, her uh, views uh, to this round table or comment. It's fascinating to hear all of your perspectives and I could relate to what I heard in every whatever everybody said and my my relationship with stories too and I'm so happy that one of the persons who triggered it is present today Shohini. It happened through uh, my work in interfaith dialogue building, which Shohini brought me into. She's the one who works more on it. But for me, you see, as I was growing up as a young adult, my angst came from the fact that I felt not heard enough, not seen enough. And I was trying desperately to be seen, to be heard. And I always felt that I have to keep achieving, achieving, achieving in order to be constantly heard or felt. I'm sure many young adults in the age of Instagram, social media feel exactly the same way, the pressure to be seen or heard. And once with Shohini, we started working on interfaith harmony. What we were doing was we were bringing people who were seemingly from very different life worlds together to talk, to connect, to share each other's stories. And in the process, we were hearing stories of others who didn't feel so other anymore. And after a while, I realized that what I had learned was the art of listening. And without the art of listening, there is no possibility to make another person feel heard or feel seen. No wonder as somebody who didn't know the art of listening and was only willing to speak 
and i could not i could not listen to others and another person also lacked the skill to listen to me so that was the day i realized that stories have the power to help you learn to listen and make another person feel heard and seen and as soon and i realized it's such a reciprocative give and take process that the moment you feel another you can make another person feel seen or heard they are willing to give you the space to be seen and heard so i realized that i i've, I've found that so for me stories became this process and of course uh, i also agree with what francis said about the semantic and understanding bit because this triggered in me the search to read more stories of of uh, of learning about how people have made sense of the world and including the mystical elements and i realized even in our upanishads the relationship between the individual soul and the collective whole has been talked about through metaphors through stories our saints all of the saints talk in terms of parables and stories so stories are also the individuals connection with divinity in them with divinity outside them and i got interested in learning of stories in different cultures and practically for me now these stories are the building blocks through which i try to understand the greater self so that's right. all i wanted to yeah. add uh, uh, or hello arkamitra that was wonderful and the way you've raised this the other aspect of story listening we have been talking a lot about storytelling and you came up with this uh, wonderful aspect which makes it complete like it was the other half and the other half which you mentioned now makes the entire story as a complete um, uh, complete kind of an existence of stories now uh, you had already mentioned about upanishads i would just like to refer uh, to a term that is used to uh, you know collectively talk about upanishads brahmanas vedas and aranyakas they are all shrutis and shrutis means which you actually hear you listen to that so Uh, the entire gamut or the entire world of vedic literature vedas upanishads brahmanas and aranyakas they all belong to the shruti category where actually you are a listener if you really want to understand vedas it is not about chanting vedas but about listening to the vedas it is about listening to the upanishad listening to the brahmanas and aranyakas and it had been a great art in traditional india this practice of listening which has actually helped us to preserve and uh, you know still propagate from things from the past like we still talk about it because of these shrutis because they heard and they existed they exist because they were heard that is what uh, arkamitra uh, had uh, shared and that was great and definitely she also spoke about meaning making like how through hearing we also try to find meaning when we are lost when we are really unable to identify our own place uh, in a very strange uh, you know geography then how stories also give meanings so thank you uh, for this wonderful sharing and uh, now i would request abha to add and hope we will see some of her puppets popping up while she talks <laughs> wonderful puppets that she has uh, abha please yes <clears throat> well i would like to connect the things that came up um, first uh, what francis was saying about Em, embedding the story and uh, uh, to me it it's also important to embody the story uh, I, i'm thinking now it came to my mind uh, something that uh, giorgio streller who is a, a theater director in it was a great theater director in italy said 
he was saying that the theater is the, is the art of telling story. And he would say, what would I do if I, do, I can't do it and I wouldn't be able to do it on a stage? Well, I would do it in a room. If I wouldn't have a room, I would do it in the street. If I couldn't do it in the street, I would do it on a chair. If I couldn't do it on a chair, I would do it with my voice. If I didn't have voice, I would do it with my body. If I couldn't do it with my body, I, and so on, until it came to the hands, I would do it with my hands. And so you would see some, somebody who would be deprived of everything, but because you say the most important thing is to tell stories. So no matter what you have, if you have your body, if you have your voice, if you have your hands, if you have a big space, you have to find a way. So I'm fascinated with this uh, thing about you know restricting and so having less and less and less so that you can really find how can i say the heart of <laughs> the heart and the body of what you want to say that's the first thing the other thing you were all most of you were talking about now with uh, uh, arkamitra sorry <laughs> your name is difficult for me um about being being uh, two no somebody who who tells the story and someone else who is listening and again uh, it came to my mind what obrazov who was a great russian puppeteer said he said that we as puppeteers actors are like a radar so we send some uh, waves and to be able to survive we must receive back so it's this constant constant giving and receiving this uh, inner force which causes uh, creates energy you know it creates energy and life so for me those two are uh, really the most important thing no matter if you tell your personal story or some someone else's story but because of course then you know, I'm thinking I come from the tradition of Commedia dell'arte and the Commedia dell'arte was born because people like De Filippo was able to look what was the life around him, a life of, you know, misery, fight, um, and, uh, but finding love in everything that he was, he was uh, um, observing. So as I was saying, I, it's not important really the type of story, the title, but to put these two things together, the, the body, the body as a whole thing, you know, a global thing with emotions, with heart, with uh, uh, anima, and, and also this reader thing. Thank you, Abha. Thank you. And how, uh, you know, that was a very interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, expression that you shared that how you are being reduced with the different elements of expression, but your telling continues. So you are actually kind of uh, the telling survives. So finally, what she was talking about is uh, the telling which becomes the heart of the entire thing. How you tell, where you tell is not very important, but the telling is very important. So you keep on telling and telling itself help you to survive and continue. Thank you, Abha, for this uh, wonderful oh, add-on. <laughs> That's great. I knew it. Something had to pop up. <laughs> so now I would request um, Roshmi Roy to add to something to this round table. Roshmi. Hello. Hi, Roshmi. Yes. Um, I, I have a different... Um, take on this because, of course, um, storytelling as an art has existed uh, through the ages, and uh, it's the way we uh, every in every society our um, the values and cultures are transmitted to the uh, next generation, and also teachers as also our Kamitras also said that. Even Jesus Christ taught through parables. Storytelling has been a method of teaching also. So um, now what I have done through my latest, the book of short stories I've written called Tales She Can Tell, it's about um, sharing your story and 
bringing that out, uh, particularly in the context of the recent pandemic, where people had so much, have been through so much and suffered so much, the way to uh, to be able to share your story with others brings a kind of catharsis, because um, trying to like. Uh, uh, in studies on hysteria, Freud and Breuer said that catharsis is the process of reducing or eliminating a complex by leading it to conscious awareness and allowing it to be expressed. So it, if we express that angst and that uh, pain that we feel, it makes our um, our pain a little lighter the way uh, when we share not only we bring it out to the um, world we also when we listen there's two two parts to it we share our story and when we listen to others we feel we feel this oneness and we connect uh, this also was mentioned this connection uh, through stories uh, we uh, bring ourselves to the forefront and we feel that we have been able to express what we are suppressing you know, so this is the um, way and uh, uh, storytelling therapy I would try to uh, advocate, just as there is drama therapy and dance therapy and music therapy. Uh, storytelling therapy is not so much, uh, you know, has not been given so much prominence, but uh, this is a, um, a great way of, um, like I said, expressing what is inside you and bringing it out into the world. Thank you. Thank you, Roshmi, for enlightening us on certain other aspects of sharing stories, how we can, the purpose of storytelling and how it can benefit the society, the people, and how it helps us to, as a, as a, a, a very cathartic experience, which cleanses the inner self by listening or sharing stories by whatever you have inside, you express it and get clean, or sometimes you listen to something and then it has a therapeutic effect. Thank you, Rashmi, for this wonderful uh, addition to this discussion. And um, uh, Gauri has also mentioned in the chat about the restrictions that we have during this pandemic, which also Francis mentioned, the apocalyptic, uh, you know, situation that we are into, that how we are contained in a smaller frame now, a camera, we can see only half the torso, and that also visually not clear, being uh, kind of uh, affected by networking. Uh, so what about the telling in these medias, in virtual media? So that is also a very interesting aspect that Gauri had raised in the chat, which I would also like other panelists or uh, to address, because that is a concern that are we really connected through this virtual medium? What is the essence of these kind of connection? What is the result? What is the outcome? Uh, what is the authenticity of this kind of connection? Now, these are certain questions that are being raised at different yeah, you know, platforms, not only in performative areas, in education, in business, everywhere where people are getting connected through virtual medium. So how does this medium affect storytelling? That can also be a point which we can address in this. So now I would uh, request uh, Shohini. Shohini, uh, 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 we have already heard about you from Orkumitra. And so, you know, we are looking forward to hear your uh, point of view regarding storytelling uh, and more. Shohini. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Janardhan. And thank you everyone for sharing so beautifully and passionately about storytelling. It's something I'm very passionate about myself. Uh, so I'll just introduce myself um, by saying that um, my journey has been from debate to dialogue. So from putting across perspectives and trying to win over an argument to actually opening up to listening to different dimensions of the same topic or the same idea and how different perspectives actually bring in a lot of more, a lot more colors uh, and helps us to you know, evolve as individuals. So I look at uh, storytelling as a deeply reflective exercise. Uh, and in my work in peace building, I work at the moment in Jammu and Kashmir. So uh, what I find is that stories provide the perfect um, 
uh, you can say it's the crucible where you can bring in a lot of your experiences, memories, uh, you get to understand historical consciousness. And at the same time, you can add a personal, your personal touch to it. And um, what emerges is a beautiful shared experience, uh, this whole experience of um, shared humanity. And I think that's the best um, gift that um, storytelling has given to human civilization as a whole across time. So uh, I hear from the field of literature, never thought I'd get here, but stories, it was a story trail that I followed all along. That's how I'd like to put it. So yes, really excited to be here and to listen to everyone. And I am so proud of Orko Mitra. She's always been a wonderful storyteller. And I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't miss this opportunity for the world to be here today. Thank you so much for inviting me in. Shaini, it was our pleasure also to hear you. And uh, moreover, I like the uh, the two words that you uh, uh, do, the two points that you mentioned, your journey um, uh, from debate to dialogue. It's a very uh, interesting uh, concept, which I also uh, recently, uh, there was this uh, program in ICCR uh, Durban, where they were talking about this concept of samavad, samvad. So samavad, vad means a positive debating, a debating that emerges into something that is productive. So which actually is possible through dialogues and not only through arguments. So how you uh, give more space to the other in dialogue, but how you usurp spaces in debate, like you actually kind of you know, control the spaces and you cover the spaces, but in dialogue, you rather provide the spaces. That's the uh, difference uh, in these two activities or acts, if you look at them in a very uh, typical way. But that was good, Shohini, that what you had shared and uh, we are looking forward to hear more from you about your experiences and you are working in a very, very uh, sensitive uh, place uh, in India, that is Kashmir. So more stories evolve uh, where there are more challenges so we would love to have you more in our <laughs> round tables as such. Okay, so uh, now I would request uh, Ms. Bonani Khatuk to add something to this round table. Bonani. Honestly, uh, uh, Mr. Janardhan, I had not expected, Mr. Ghosh, I had not expected to be included as a panelist. I was only hoping to listen to this and learn a lot uh, from what everyone has said. And I must say that my expectations have been more than fulfilled. That has happened. Um, but then uh, I'm really a bit taken aback at being asked to speak in, uh, on such a uh, topic. But uh, so I, I desperately tried to, you know, um, uh, dish out what I have in, through my experience uh, in life as uh, a teacher for 37 years. My interaction with uh, my pupils, interaction with colleagues, interaction with the world outside, all this has um, sort of, you know, come into informing what I have to say. I don't have much to say. Primarily, you know, I want to draw attention to one element of storytelling, which probably uh, is one of the oldest incentives to listening and that is the feeling of wonder especially in infantile societies the element of wonder was very important it was how the story was being fashioned or crafted or structured during its delivery to listeners for example you know all traditional lore in all uh, societies all communities were actually uh, probably delivered by a minstrel, uh, singing minstrel to a group of listeners. Uh, they knew the stories. It wasn't, the story didn't come as a surprise to them, but what did come, what did actually fuel their imagination, what stirred them up was the wonder of listening to the story being related in a particular way. 
So that is one point I'd like to make. And mm -hmm. another is like somebody has already raised, I think it is uh, mm, maybe one of you has raised the question of the virtual communities being created nowadays. Um, we have these uh, you know, TV serial communities. We have the Korean drama communities. We have music lovers communities. And of course, one like yours, it's a storyteller's community, you know, bringing people together in all these ways. One of the problems that I think you did point out was, you know, it also could act as a kind of element of uh, sort of insulation. You know, it could separate people from, uh, you know, one group would feel uh, more connected to the group members and in a way, could sort of think of others as outsiders. And that is a danger in this kind of virtual community building that we definitely need to be aware of and find solutions to that. Thank you. I don't think I should say anything more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ghatok. That uh, one very important aspect that you have mentioned is that element of wonder, like how you know, the same story survives from time uh, immemorial. You have been hearing that same story again and again, but still you love to hear that story. So what is that element in that story which makes the story survive? So many stories from Mahabharata, from Panchatantra, from Jataka tales. Till date, when we kind of share that story, that element of wonder, I think, is something that makes the story survive. And that wonder is created by the teller, by the craftsman, by the living person who is carrying it like a vehicle and giving life to that same old story and how it becomes new, fresh, and keeps us hooked. So thank you for your uh, wonderful contribution. And uh, it, it was a great uh, kind of uh, uh, perspective that you had mentioned here. Uh, well, um, I would now uh, request, uh, uh, I know she's our host, but she had also mentioned in the chat about uh, therapy being one of the most important aspect in storytelling. And uh, she would like you know, people to uh, contribute their thoughts about how stories can act as therapies. And so I would like to hear from Sarah uh, about her uh, perspective about storytelling and what she feels um, about it. Yes, Sarah. Yes, so as far as concern, uh, my experience with storytelling helped me to, to experience um, intercultural um, discussions. So because I'm French people, I'm working with Alain du Bengal, and uh, during any workshop, uh, people come from the United States, from India, from anywhere. So I love that. And uh, of course, I don't know uh, the people, but um, each time I'm, I'm very surprised that uh, everyone is so kind and they listen the the people and we are shift to work together and create a, a story um, based on our own feelings, perception. And at the end, we can create a common story. So I love that. Of course, the, that also because of, uh, thanks to the, the, the host and the, the facilitator, uh, such as uh, Francis. <laughs> so, Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so just um, I would not. I would like to to know more about the the the, the storytelling therapy because I think it could be uh, it could become a, a method used maybe by doctor or therapist because it's something I don't know if it's new or not, but I never heard about that. So. Please tell me more about, about it, and um, like I would enjoy the uh, more detail, please. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sarah. And uh, no, I have heard 
there are psychologists who are using story as a therapy. And uh, they also, uh, there, there is a therapy where the psychologists tell stories to the person who is attending or who is uh, kind of being treated. Uh, and it also happens the other way around. The person who is treating also tells stories to the therapist like the psychologist. So it is both ways uh, storytelling uh, methods are being extensively being used by psychologists. I've recently read many articles where uh, stories are being used by therapists in a very, very uh, interesting way. And they're also framing stories after finding out about the person who is being treated, the background, and then creating stories which would appeal uh, to that uh, uh, person who is being treated. And from there, uh, a kind of uh, treatment or a help uh, could be extended. Now, this is already being used. And I think others here would can kind of contribute more and give more such examples. And here, uh, I also find, um, uh, uh, yes, Roshmi has already written that there is a new age psychotherapy and uh, therapeutic storytelling is there uh, in practice. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, kind of, you know, draw your attention to what uh, Francis has uh, said about the wonder, and he has mentioned about another Tagorean masterpiece, the post office, Daggar, where Amol is waiting for the king's letter. And this waiting for the letter is like waiting for that story to kind of emerge. Again and again, through all these stories, we are waiting for that wonder. Uh, so it was uh, a great discussion where we, we had all shared our uh, bits in pieces. Ja and... Janardan, there is Varun who is left. Varun who is left. You okay, okay. Invite Varun. Uh, just let me, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I missed it. Varun, uh, I, I'm, I'm extremely sorry. I uh, This is just a technological. This is, I, I would rather kind of, you know, uh, 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 complain to the Zoom because the Zoom did not allow me to see Varun being present there. If it was a real table, I wouldn't have missed Varun at all. Uh, so, uh, yes, Varun. Oh, uh, I would request you. <laughs> Janardhan, actually, don't worry. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't... I wouldn't say too much else very different. <laughs> I have a tendency to throw complications into the basket. So don't worry, we're, we're, we're good. I just wanted to say yes. um, there is a somebody who is uh, 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 who started, he's written a book called The Poetry Pharmacy, a gentleman called William Seagart. He's working on the story pharmacy. So um, I think what he tries is um, when people come to him, they come to him with specific uh, difficulties where they need care, they're seeking care. And what he does is recommend stories that they read, poetry oh. that they read. And he, he picks the right poem for the right um, sort of care seeker. And, um, and he's working on story pharmacy. Uh, that's something people could look up. Um, but yes, Thank you very much, all of you, for that, that, sharing. It was nice listening to everybody. That, that, that's, a, that's a great uh, kind of addition, Varun. That, that's very interesting. Like you have a pharmacy of stories, like where you have these different stories being prescribed for you. And you really thoughtfully think about which story would suit you for a particular reason. And that's very interesting. And uh, the study that I think the gentleman who is kind of creating is the kind of study that he has to go through, uh, the, the psychological aspect, the aspect of uh, how the stories generate different kinds of emotions and how those emotions can help us in different kind, kind time in our life. So this is very interesting. We would like to know more about it and good that you mentioned. Can you just uh, <clears throat> uh, write in the chat box the name of the a uh, person who is working on story uh, pharmacy? I'll do that. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yes, I, I, it's now, William Descartes. Uh, I'll do that. I'll put it on the chat. Yes. William Descartes. Oh, uh, Descartes? Uh, okay. Okay. Descartes. Okay. Uh, S-I-E-G-H-A-R-T. 
Okay, per perfect. I think I've, uh, I see. Okay, somebody's put it, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Varun. And thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Maya, also, to kind of add that to it. Okay, and now... Uh, okay. Now, now we 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 uh, we make it just a little bit of an open uh, forum, and it was already very open. But I just tried to maneuver through so that everybody got time and everybody got their portion of the table, <laughs> which uh, this big round table that we had. But now you can add more to your thoughts, and at random we might go. So, so anyone who would like to. Uh, add something more. yes can i yes 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 uh, please actually i was i was thinking of uh, dr kosh i was thinking of uh, this present mode of alternate storytelling mm -hmm. where uh, nowadays uh, you tell a story and then uh, you can have several endings so leaving the ending open it's almost a kind of you know more inclusive accommodating um, uh, environment that is created when a writer or a teller uh, solicits uh, endings or solicits developments to the story from the listener. So that is a more, uh, you know, a more active engagement uh, on the part, even of, uh, on the part of the listeners. So it's like the thing, <laughs> a song is not just uh, you know, the musicians, it's also for the listener. So together, the listener and the musician, they make up the song. Similarly, you know, this is a more active kind of an uh, example of how uh, stories can be built up together. Yes, and 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 Miss Kotuk, we have. Uh, I was recently also reading about this participatory storytelling, where uh, you know the audience also participates in the making of the story, like how you trigger with few uh, pointers, and then it becomes the property of the collective who is present in the story, and everybody contributes, and it is open ended as you said, and there is a plurality of culmination of the story. So it's not one directional. There is multiple options where the story can lead us to and where it can go. So it's not only the rabbit and the tortoise where only the rabbit sleeps and the tortoise wins, but we might have different other options open. That's great. That's that's wonderful. Yes, uh, we would invite such kind of uh, uh, thoughts from others, like what about participatory storytelling, therapeutic storytelling, um, about story pharmacy, a very interesting term that Varun had shared with us. And so what, what are the opinion uh, about this? And as we said, that the major uh, concern is Zoom. Yes, Francis. Yeah, please. Yes. Well, I, I uh, thank you, Chiranjana. I, I would like to vol volunteer uh, 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 some enlargement on on my uh, the reference that was triggered in my head by uh, Bonani's uh, uh, idea, and uh, that that made me think of uh, Dakar uh, by Tagore, yeah? where where Omal is this small boy and he's waiting for the king's letter, and but, but we don't know what's going to be in the letter. Yeah. So the letter is some, something that is quite open. Yeah. And I think this, this sort of metaphorically describes for me the fact that every story is a cooperative, uh, cooperative thing. It's a collaborative uh, uh, piece of machinery. It's uh, every story is in fact a dialogue because we, we, um, um, uh, envisions all kinds of things about what's beyond, what's yonder and what's beyond the hill and 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 and, and but we don't know what what the, what's going to be in the letter of the king and it it, it is going to be the the, the 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 playing together of of whatever letter comes if and when the letter comes, yeah, right. and how Omal reacts. Yeah. So, so every story is, is, is in fact a conversation. And this reminds me also of a, a Hikawa T, uh, uh, an, an Arab storyteller. I, I, for, for a while, I, I used to live in the Middle East. And when I lived in, um, in, in, in Dimask, in Damascus, yeah, there was this, this, this Arab uh, 
you, you, you would call it the bar next to the next to the big mosque where people uh, came to smoke uh, hubbly bubbly and drink a bottle of water. And on a throne, there was a storyteller, a hikawat. Yeah? And the hikawat would tell stories. And then, and then he would say, he would say, and the robber, the robber, the robber asked the man. And then, and then he would say to the public, what do you want him to ask the man? Mm. <laughs> and the public would shout, ask him this, ask him that. Yeah. And, and, and then the hikawat would go on and the story would evolve completely and in an unplanned uh, sort of zigzaggy way yeah? and it com continuously driven by the input given by the audience i love that idea very much this is also an idea that was developed by uh, by augusto boal well, in his forum theater, forum theater. Bit, where, where where through forum theater it's the it's the spect the spectator he called it the spectator yeah who would who who would give feed, feed to the to the actors and co-create the story? Good, good, Francis. You brought in Boal. I was just thinking about playback theater and forum theater and invisible theater. How uh, you know Boal and the rest? They had actually brought in this participatory performances, like where the spectator is just not a docile, you know, a very inactive participant there in the space, but is a very active participant and who contributes to the creation. That is what Boal thought, that spectator is also a very important contributor to a performance. So here is a storyteller also in participatory storytelling that uh, you had mentioned just now, where you are asking, Hikawat, where you are asking the audience or provoking the audience to participate and construct the story and take us to a new journey every time with new audience new journeys every time you have a new audience you you, you travel to a new place you travel to a new place that's life francis anybody else who would like to add oh, something yeah. to what uh, you know francis had said or anything yes uh, oh, Gauri, Gauri, Gauri. yeah i think um what francis mentioned um, and Banani's question. Um, oral storytelling in the sense of telling traditional tales, oral tales, I think takes this aspect of, you know, co-constructing a story as its very tenet of storytelling. So whether you kind of very consciously uh, employ a uh, playback techniques or breaking of the fourth wall techniques, uh, or you don't even need to do that because with oral storytelling, what you find is two things. I'm trying to make two points here. One is the older traditions like Banani mentioned, um, which were in the format of not just an authoritative storyteller telling a story, but co-constructive. And I'm thinking of, you know, the Finnish texts, for example, the Kalavela, uh, which is an old Finnish epic. The way in which it was told um, was two groups co-creating the entire epic. So it's a familiar epic that's known, but each group says, tells a line and the other group comes back with telling that line and then adding one more. So there is a co-creation happening there. Then you have other traditions like, you know, I mean, you have it amongst the Bhils in India, Western India, um, subgroup of the Bhils, not the heterogeneous Bhils. Um, them as well as Caribbean folk traditions, um, where in before a storyteller even starts a story, they will gauge the temperature of the audience, what we call it now. Is, is the audience ready to listen? Are they in a space to listen? Do they want to listen to a story? So there are uh, you know, vocal intonations that the storyteller will initiate and the audience will come back with. Ha. Huh? Hoy, ha, 
hoy ha hoy and you build up the temperature and you build up the energy and you build up the pace till the story kind of arrives so then it's not even the voluntary act of the storyteller beginning the storyteller is riding on a wave on an energy on on a rhythm and therefore the story just arrives so there are these older traditions um and in the more kind of um current if you want to call it performative traditions of storytelling um what i find wonderful is that these days when storytellers tell um very often the storyteller doesn't appear on stage that is something that's uh, quite um classical if you will orthodox classical um very often the storyteller is waiting and receives the audience as they arrive into the space who are you how are you and if you ask the storytellers why you doing this the storyteller will say I really want to know where the energy of the audience is at when they are arriving into this space. So I'm not exclusive. And this is the same format that you will find in Rajasthan. In Rajasthan they have a particular kind of a uh, format wherein the storyteller can be anywhere um in the folk traditions but becomes a storyteller or the story grabs them when they sit on the carpet which is called the jajam and as soon as you're on that carpet you're in a story space so in in the west in europe it would be once upon a time and once upon a time you're in the story space everyone knows before that you're just an ordinary member of the public and i think that's what makes traditional storytelling such a kind of relatable co-creative format is that it's not about you <laughs> as the performer it's about the story when it arrives and are you ready to catch the story and then tell it so a lot of the traditional storytelling training is also people will tell you good trainers will tell you you're not performing the story you're telling the story as if you were in a cinema theater the person next to you can't see or hear and you are transmitting that story that you can see but the person next to you can't see so there is this aspect of you know melt melt the ego of the performer you're doing nothing <laughs> and i think that's if one begins with that then the co-creative element the element of you know this is a story sharing it it doesn't become overly conscious it's part of the whole journey in that sense if i'm making sense so i think there are both there have been traditional forms that have been passed down but maybe forgotten and i think there are certain forms of storytelling that are kind of trying to work in the spirit of that story sharing that co creation i just wanted to add that no 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 that was great that was lovely that was fantastic that what you have and the, the reference to different uh, traditional methods of co creation in india different corners of india and also in the west and the caribbean and all uh, what you mentioned now gauri uh, with uh, just connected to that i would just like to add is this concept of vyasa like we often refer to that mahabharata was written by vyasa the uh, uh, the the puranas were written by vyasa but vyasa is that space that you are talking about it's not about a particular person if you look into this concept of the vyasa is not the name of a particular person though it has been uh, in a later stage that we have a particular person named vyasa who is historically present in mahabharata but once you look at the creation the huge amount of creation that is entitled to vyasa it it is obvious that it had not been one single vyasa so now also when you are sitting in the space and you are narrating mahabharata you also become vyasa and the seat is known as vyas peet means the seat of the vyas so one whoever sits there becomes vyasa so this uh, you know obliteration of the personal self telling the story 
the ego or the hierarchy that is formed when you are telling a story and somebody is listening, that is being dissolved. And that's a very interesting practice that you have mentioned. And it is also in the classical form. It's the same with Bharata. Like when we say Natya Shastra was written by Bharata. Now, Bharata is not an individual. It is all the contributors who actually gave shape to this Natya Shastra are the group of Bharatas. So Bharata is just like uh, a designation, a manager, like a manager. So manager can be, uh, it, it can be Janadhan, it can be Gauri, it can be Francis, it can be Varun, Sudipta, anyone. So the manager is actually not creating ego because it's a very neutral space. So similarly, these um, aspects are also there in our folk culture also, as you mentioned, Gauri. Okay, so uh, a, a few more uh, contributions uh, can be uh, encouraged. We have some more time. And Shudipto, uh, you have been a silent listener for such a long time. So we would like to hear your uh, you know, interpretation also and some contribution to the round table. Shudipta. Yes, I, I think that sometimes I take the Upanishads too literally and uh, go towards silence rather than speech. But uh, okay. uh, the thing is that uh, uh, I think the idea of uh, getting everybody together, having everybody together like this uh, is something that one doesn't have, but it does just happen. And it uh, happens that so many different thoughts have uh, emerged uh, today. Well, there are there are a few things that I have been grappling with. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, a few things that have come to my mind is that uh, <clears throat> you know the responsibilities of a storyteller today, and uh, what what is that responsibility uh, of the storyteller? Although uh, we are living in this world uh, where the storyteller is having to embrace the virtual and the pre-modern at the same time, and, uh, and uh, having to constantly create contents for uh, uh, a very uh, dynamically emerging uh, reality. And within this reality, he is constantly having to grapple with an information overload. And uh, how uh, we are becoming, uh, what we are becoming uh, through this social interaction is uh, of great consequence. And this is, uh, 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 it is very important. That is why to come together uh, at regular times uh, and uh, discuss this becoming and uh, these uh, elements which uh, are adding up to the uh, creation of this dialogue and this perspective, which a storyteller is able to create uh, uh, through his articulations. Also the manner, the actual, the, the the, the attributes, the, the essence of storytelling is the sense of connecting without talking, a pre, an extra linguistic uh, exercise. And uh, how, how, do, how do we keep our sanity uh, in the midst of uh, in this uh, uh, very dynamically, uh, wo dynamic world which is filled with uh, ever increasing conflicts and as we navigate through that, it is the practice that uh, of uh, storytelling as I have, uh, as I'm seeing now, or as I've seen Francis, and as I've seen Jonathan, and as I, I uh, the inspiration that Ava brings to uh, the, uh, to, to, to this uh, forum, to this embodiedness, this embodied action is uh, of great consequence. We are all looking for revolutions. Uh, we are all looking for, uh, ways to transform reality as a storyteller, I guess. So that is my little bit about storytelling. I think Maya has something that she's got yeah. a hand up Maya for a long time. She's got something to share. Yeah. Yes, Maya. Maya, please. Yeah. Hi. Um, <clears throat> so I think there are a couple of points that were raised um, from Gori, um, from um, Sudipta about, um, well, I think I'll first like talk about the um, like the setting of the story, because I think um, there is um, a shift in dynamics, whether you tell a story that is, you know, 
maybe down on the ground with a, a bunch of other people who are listening, whether that be in a circle or that just be, you know, spread out in different situations and then having a storyteller be up on a stage, you know, and then if the formation be a circle or if it be in just like having the storyteller in a corner. Um, when I learned about storytelling techniques, um, this, you know, different, you know, formations of having the storyteller in the center or having the audience in the center, I think that all really kind of changes the dynamic of the, the, the story being told and also the storyteller themselves. You know, I think if it's, you know, one storyteller among all of the people, it feels much more communal. But then if it's a storyteller who's up on a podium or up on a stage, it also changes the the shift, um, and I think that can just, of course, uh, change the feeling of the story. And um, I remember on a personal um, experience of telling a story outside with, um, you know, just people coming in and out as they please, and you know, having that be my first experience um, storytelling um, with people who I didn't know, and um, and just you know, in a, it was you know in a facilitated. Um, area but um you know you have to I, I did you know talk to them and say you know hello where are you from and get to know them and and also had to um so be thinking about how I would tell my story depending on who was present so for example I had a story that was um maybe quite a um a, a deep and maybe serious topic but then there were children that who arrived um in the performance space and i wanted to i had to you know change or or you know um kind of recraft my story just on the spot because you know there were certain things maybe i couldn't say in front of children um and then that being if there were only adults of course i could rechange and reshift the story being told with adults um and you know, I think, and and maybe if there are people who are in the audience who come from different countries and different languages are being spoken, you know, having that to also uh, influence your piece. So that, that was just something that came to mind when you spoke about that, Gori, because um, I um, definitely resonated with that. And um, I think about the future of storytelling and, you know, how can we see the future of storytelling going on? And um, I think you know a lot. You know the traditional storytelling, whether you put a quote on it or capital T traditional. Um, I think um, that kind of uh, art form has been lost. Uh, I think maybe I. I guess we can maybe agree. I don't know, um, but maybe it hasn't been lost. But I think you know, with the whole modern world that we live in, with technology, you know, I think we see very little of that. You know, communal experiences, which. I kind of referenced at the beginning of, you know, seeing indigenous communities keeping that going because that's how they live. You know, they sit down at the fire and they talk um, with each other. The grandparents tell the stories to the grandchildren. And that's um, a tradition which we don't really have so much anymore in the um, modern world. Um, and I think there is a way that we should bring that back. And um, I think it's important to maybe tell stories um, which have like maybe polit political issues or environmental issues or social issues, telling stories can actually um, open up the dialogue to everybody, not just the leaders, but you know, everybody um, in, in um, society. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I think um, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Yeah, Maya, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for adding all these elements from how to make it exclusive and how to make it inclusive and the way you kind of extend through stories. Um, uh, I think uh, we have really uh, created a huge canvas, like from the beginning, from the tradition to contemporary times, the challenges, uh, different traditional ways, different contemporary ways, how things have evolved, and what are the different other, uh, you know, auxiliary uh, auxiliaries that are attached with stories? Uh, how it can become an interpersonal thing? How it can become an intrapersonal thing? So many things uh, kind of cropped up in today's discussion. It was very rich, and I felt um, so many elements had emerged out of this roundtable discussion. So I think it was rightly named Emergence. I think Shudipto, the way he had named this uh, particular um, roundtable conference as Emergence, because it is not only emergence of stories, but emergence of ideas, 
that can develop uh, storytelling as a practice, storytelling as uh, something that is very, very, uh, very, very important for our existence. So uh, I would like to uh, wrap up today's uh, uh, story, this roundtable conference that we had with such lovely storytellers. Uh, we had people uh, who had contributed uh, from the academic field, practitioners, listeners, uh, and those who are also into some other, uh, you know, uh, activities in our life. So all of them had made this discussion very rich. So I take this opportunity to thank everyone for participating and share their wonderful minds, thoughts to make this discussion really fruitful. I would like to thank Sudipto for organizing it and creating this platform for us. I would like to thank Sara for providing us this platform and helping us share our thoughts uh, on this wonderful day. So with that wonderful note, I would like to uh, say goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.